Hello everyone, welcome back, Dom here and in this video I'm going to show you something that's very, very important and trust me, it will save you a lot of frustration in the future and that's how to back up your Cubase project, how to create multi-tracks right so that when you want to come back to a project two years, five years, ten years down the line, you have all the flexibility you need and you can open your project and it will sound exactly the same even if you don't have any of the plugins that you used in the original project. And I'm going to show you how to do this the right way, right after this. Let's say that you finished your track, you have created an amazing production, you had a perfect singer, you had amazing plugins, you use your latest soft synths, you use your hardware synthesizer, you use some hardware compressors, you don't have to do all this, you just have an awesome track and you're done, you upload it. One year down the line, you get a call from a post-production house and they say, we love your track, it's amazing. We want to use it for synchronization, for TV, for advertising. Can you just give us the vocals? Can you give us a version without the drums? Can you give us a version that's 30 seconds long without the drums or with the drums turned down a little bit in volume? And the question is, can you still open your one year old project? Can you still open a project that's five years old, I guarantee that unless you have the same computer and you haven't changed anything, you probably have a problem doing this. Let me show you how you can avoid any of these problems in the future. From now on, you won't have this problem because with Cubase 11, this problem is gone forever. So here I have a project here. As you can see, I've recorded quite a few analog synths. It's kind of a cinematic synth track. I'm going to link it down below and it's called Beautiful Asymmetry. But I want to keep all the MIDI, I want to keep everything like it is, but I also want to have flexibility. So how do you do this? First of all, before you even start doing anything else, I would totally suggest that you go to your pool, okay? This is the pool. If you want to open the pool, just go media and open pool window or just hit Control and P or Command and P on the Mac. The first thing you want to see is if you have everything in the trash and you also want to make sure that all your audio files are in place and they're all in the same working directory. If you haven't done this, I'm going to make a video on how to do this. Forget about it. Now, if everything is okay though, because I think that you're already familiar with that, then all you need to do is go to File and click on Backup Project. Create an empty folder and then you can just go here and select your backup options. So what I would suggest is you can minimize the audio files. This will reduce the size of your backup. Personally, I don't like to do this. Why? Because there might be a take somewhere or maybe like an audio event that I have trimmed that I still want to keep the part that I left out. It depends on how important the session is for you. If I have a session with a really, really good singer, then I would probably not minimize the audio files. Then, make direct offline processing permanent. So if you've done any direct offline processing, like add a specific plugin to an audio event, this will make it permanent. I don't like to do this. Remove unused files. Again, that's a good option to have. Maybe you don't want to have the unused files. If you've done like hundreds and hundreds of takes, maybe it makes sense to just remove the unused files. Do not back up video. If you have a video in your project, I would probably leave this off. And do not back up mix down folder. I don't click on that. I want to have everything. So once you do this, basically what Cubase will do, it will take all the files of the entire project and put it into a new folder. You can be sure that all the files are going to be gathered there and you're not going to have any missing files if you were you know, using files from elsewhere, from external hard drives and all these things. So that's step number one. This is something that's not related to what I'm going to show you now, but it is a good thing to know. Cubase has a neat backup option there, okay? So I wanted to share this with you. The most important thing, though, is the new export queues. So if you go export, audio mix down, the first thing you need to do is obviously make sure that your locators are set correctly. So in order to do this, I'm selecting everything 
Control A or Apple A on the Mac and press B. And sometimes I like to add a little bit of, you know, room in the end. It doesn't hurt, okay? And maybe in the beginning as well, depending on if you have like any build-up effects or something like this. Now, the next thing that you need to do is make sure that you export everything, everything in audio. This used to be a little bit of a painful procedure in the past, but with Cubase 11, it's really so easy. There are no excuse for not backing up your projects after you finish doing them. How do you do this? You go multiple, okay? And when you go multiple, there are a few ways to do this. If you click on this icon, everything that you select is going to be exported, okay? The entire length. We want everything. So I'm going to unclick this and I'm going to say, okay, I need the output channel. Why not? You know, maybe I want to have the stereo out as well and then all the audio channels all the effects channels and all the group channels okay this is very very important now why do you want to do this because you want to have the ultimate flexibility when you go back to this project you know later on and you need the audio channels obviously that's uh, you know self-explanatory you need the effects channels because if you have a send effect like a reverb or a delay then you want to have this. And then it's a good idea to have the group channels as well because sometimes you might have some processing on the group channels that's really crucial for the sound. For example, sometimes I run my drums through the black box, the HD2, the hardware device. This goes to my group channel. So I want to bounce this group channel separately because maybe at that stage, I don't want to remember all the settings that I have for my hardware black box. So we have this, that's great. And now it will export the range between the locators. So we're good. Now, the next thing that you need to do, and this is very, very important, is you need to set up a naming scheme. So if you go here, you can see I have a few naming schemes myself. See, multi-track detailed, I have a simple multi-track, and all these things. You want to make sure that every track has a unique name, number one. And the other thing that you want to make sure is that your tracks are easily searchable, okay? You can find them easily. So if I see a name, I know that, okay, this is, for example, track number one, the real choir, beautiful asymmetry, and this is an audio. Now, if I want to make sure that I can distinguish the audio channels to the group channels and the effects channels, for example, I can just move the type, to the very beginning. See that? So now I know that this is audio. If it was a group, it would say group 001, reacquire, and so on and so forth. Coming up with a good scheme is really crucial because after a while you're going to be like, okay, this guitar, is it a group or is it an audio channel? For example, this scheme has the channel type counter, the channel name, and the name, which is this one here, okay? So there's a lot of customization. You can change the counter. You can change the actual digits. Very, very simple, but it's very important. And you can also have free text. For example, you might want to have the tempo of the song here. Always very useful. Okay, so now we have this. So up to this point, I think you could probably do all this with the previous versions of Cubase. But with Cubase 11, things change dramatically. So I'm going to show you now something that's really, really powerful. But before I show you that, I want to talk a little bit about today's video sponsor, and that's Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of amazing classes for curious and creative people. You can explore your passions, you can be really creative and learn something new every day. And this month I've been checking out a class that I was so excited that was added on Skillshare, and that's YouTube success, script, shoot and edit with MKBH. You probably know MKBHD, he is like a YouTube celebrity, but he is amazing and his videos look incredible and I was so looking forward to diving into his class. Being a YouTuber for me, this was a big deal. So he goes into his whole process of creating a YouTube video, starting his project, researching the topic, writing the script, planning your visuals, you know, B-rolls, everything. And I also love the fact that you can even see the transcript of the video straight away so you can watch it even without sound. 
really nice touch. So with Skillshare, you might want to explore things like music, learn an instrument, learn about photography, learn about videography, you name it. And the great thing is that Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes like the MKBHD one, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And for the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link below in the description, you will get a free trial of the premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's go back to the multi-track creation. So here's where things get interesting, okay? The first thing that you can do is you can select your format. So I might have a preset, 44.1 kilohertz, 16-bit WAV file, or I might want to have an HQ MP3 file, high quality. You can create your own presets and then you can also save your presets. Let's say I want to add this with my current settings. So all I need to do is add to Q. Okay, check this out. Boom. All my files are there. Okay, perfect. Now, let's say I also want to have a FLAC file. I can add this to the queue. And then maybe I want to have a WAV file again. But here comes the really powerful and interesting bit. Maybe I want to create different versions. This is the default behavior. This is including the insert effects and the channel strip. So that means that if a channel has insert effects and if it has any channel strip effects, they're going to be printed with the audio, okay? They're going to be exported. But sometimes you might want to have some extra flexibility. Why? Because you might have added a specific compressor to a track and you want to change it down the line. You might want to do a remix or you might want to use your material in a different way. If you wanted to do this before Cubase 11, you had to go deactivate all the inserts manually, especially for a big project like this, it would take you a long time and you had to be very, very careful. In this case, we can go and say, give me a dry version of all my channels. And all you need to do is just click here, add to queue. There we go done okay and now we're going to have the same files but without the effects how cool is that now let's say that we also want even more flexibility let's say that this hypothetical post-production house says we want to have the acapella with the reverbs and everything hmm okay then you would probably have to go and recreate this project because you would have to add the dry vocal and then you would have to add the send effect. But what if on the send effect, you also had some other elements, you had some backing vocals, for example, going to the same vocal reverb, then you would be in trouble because you don't have that reverb anymore five years down the line. So what do you do? It gets better, I told you. You go here and you say, include the group effects and the send effects to our export. So that means that if I have a vocal, it goes to a group, the group has a compressor, and then it also has let's say a send effect like a reverb, this vocal is going to be bounced with a reverb as well. How cool is that? So again, if you wanted to do this manually, it would take you days, days. I'm not kidding, it would take you days. When I used to work in various studios back in the day and I had to do this, I hated it. There's a specific DAW that couldn't even do offline export. Yeah, okay. Where here I can say, Add to queue and boom, everything is there ready to be bounced. Now, let's say I also want to add my master effects. Let's say a compressor, like my entire mastering chain, that it's still here and I have it. I can go here and say, export the master, the groups and the sense, everything, everything, you know, included in all the channels. And you go and add this, boom, to our queue. So let's see what we have here. 51 files, 51 files, 51 files, 51 files. We're talking over 250 files. These files, I would have to do this manually, most of them. But instead, I can just start queue export. Have my coffee. And I can come back after five minutes and it's going to be done. And I think that this is very unique to Cubase. I haven't seen a DAW up to this point that offers this much flexibility. Some DAWs, major DAWs, even recently they didn't have the option to export send effects properly. It was 
like with a workaround. So we're really spoiled with Cubase, so let's use it wisely. Like I said, there's no excuse anymore. You finish a project, do this, you know? It's literally five clicks. Just do it. You'll thank me later because if you cherish your music and if you believe in your music and if you love what you're doing, you might want to go back, okay? And this is a very fast way. I'm guilty of the same thing. I used to write songs in the past and then I wasn't doing this and now I cannot go back to them because I open it and there's the old contact free or contact for and it's not there anymore. Even if I have the library, it's updated, it's no longer working. And even if it did, I would have to find this old legacy installer. Go figure, never gonna happen. So this is a very fast way to future-proof your projects. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you're going to do this from now on. And if you enjoyed this and if you found it useful, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. And if you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and share this with anyone you think they're not doing this because you have to do this, okay? I'm gonna start Q export, but go go and back up your project now, okay? Just don't forget it. I know you have a project on your hard drive. Can you back it up? Okay. <laughs>